Welcome everyone to the first day of spring and the first day of our spring series. I'm, ba I'm Barry Beer and this is Matt Brown here and welcome to spring. Well today we're going to be talking about getting prepared for spring and the days are getting longer. Before we get on to today's show, just a reminder that September is underway, so if you've got a computer handy right now, jump on the CPA website and find out how you can help raise money for people with disabilities. And joining me in the studio for episode 267. Good morning to Matt Brown. Welcome to the Spring Series. Welcome to Spring. Thank you very much, Barry. Yes, Spring is definitely one of my favourite months, Barry. Goodbye, winter. See you later. That's behind us. Spring. And as you said, Barry, the days are getting longer. So that means more opportunity to get outside and get some fresh air, Barry. So to open episode 267, let's recap on, on what we've talked about so far on our series. We've talked about how to manage our stress levels, how to speak to people, on the phone, how not to speak to people, what foods to eat, what drinks to have, etc. Here's Matt now to open episode 267 and to recap what we've talked about so far. Uh, thanks, Barry. Yes, there's some great topics there that we've, we've discussed and continue to discuss about mental health and food and exercise, all the things that keep us uh, in a good a good state, Barry. You know, as we say, look good, feel good. You've got to look after the inner body so you can shine to everyone outside that body, Barry. And uh, you're a great inspiration for our Viewers, your positive attitude, your, nothing will hold you back. I like that attitude, Barry, so keep it up. Spring's here. You can get out, see a bit more of the sunshine and the fresh air. Well, also in, on the first day of our spring series, we'll be talking about how to take care of your vehicle, including a motorbike. Now, a car and a motorbike is a, a, a two very precious things. Now, always look after it. If something is wrong with the, the car or motorbike, make sure you deal with the problem sooner rather than later. Here's Matt now. Very true, Barry. Yes, since I uh, spend a lot more time on my motorbike these days, Barry, it's very important to have my bike serviced. And if there's anything wrong with my bike, uh, I have no car, no shell that can protect me, Barry. I've just got my helmet, and that's about it. So it's uh, very important for my bike to be serviced, but also for cars to be serviced, Barry, because a lot of cars don't see motorbikes. They're used to seeing a car, so uh, they also need to uh, also pay attention to all those car drivers out there too, Barry. Okay. Now, also, make sure that you know what fuel goes into a car or into a motorbike. Here's Matt now. Yeah, that's an, <laughs> that's an important one, Barry. I heard a story... Uh, the other day with one of the uh, CPA vans, someone was putting uh, the wrong fuel into a diesel and uh, the, yes, that wasn't uh, wasn't too good for the car, Barry. So always uh, read if you don't know, if it's a new vehicle, 
read the uh, side of the cap when you open up the petrol cap it usually says you know diesel only or unleaded so always pay attention especially if it's not your vehicle and look after it as though it was okay well you might you may not have heard that outside of studios yesterday Matt was going for his driving test to see whether he can become a van driver now <laughs> with the van always make sure that everything is in working more order and that includes the hoist the lights the radio the, the, the gps that breaks the lock here's matt very true barry so yes yesterday i went through an assessment to see if i was capable of driving the van uh, that was all good uh, got a few years experience under my belt now barry so it's a lot easier to drive to that van barry than what we would know from 20 25 years ago it's a lot more sensors on the van there's a reverse camera now there's lots of things to aid people who don't who don't have the driving experience um yeah that, that was fun that was that was a nice uh, lesson i found it quite easy to to ride that van but most importantly i learned some valuable things in regards to inside the van barry which you pointed out the hoist and how to secure a wheelchair inside the van so my client is safe that is what i definitely did learn yesterday which was very valuable okay and also look at the, how much fuel is on the fuel gauge look at the fuel gauge to know how much diesel or petrol is in a vehicle and that includes a motorbike it might now that's true with the old cpa barry if the if the fuel gauge goes under halfway that particular driver has to get the, the van filled up and then we log all the details in there so it should be no excuse everything's paid for everything's in the van so if you uh, get to that situation where it gets under half a tank please fill it up okay. makes it easier for our clients Barry I don't want to be stuck out with you we're having a great day and no one's filled up the, the van for us so important and also make sure after before you lock the van guys fill out the log book the driver's name where you went etc here's my here's matt now very true barry yeah after we finish finish uh, for the day with the client make sure we log everything down the odometer uh, if there was any incidents in in, in the van or, or anything could be playing up in the van, bro. There could be a light or something come on telling me there's something uh, not right with the, with the van. Don't leave it uh, for the next person's problem. Take responsibility, get it, get it looked at so the next person that goes in the van has a nice smooth drive. Now, getting back onto family cars, uh, family cars, now, you you are planning a family out okay you've got to make sure that your car is in good condition before you take it out anywhere on the road we we can't do it now because we're in lockdown but once lockdown starts to set a, a drop a bit which i'm sure it will i okay look after your car make sure everything is working such as your automatic uh, windows your ac that your air conditioning because with summer coming up now you need to have a good air conditioner for your car it might now yeah that's true Barry if it's an older car you'll probably go to your when you get the car service get them to check if it needs to be regassed 
because uh, yeah, once once your air conditioner goes grey, we're so used to having a nice air conditioning these days. When it does go, it can be quite uncomfortable on those hot days. That's for sure, isn't it? Well, it can, it can. So always make sure as well that that your um your fuel gauge is working because how will you know how much petrol you've got in the tank in my offside yeah that, that's a the petrol one barry always good to know you know who was last driving in the car if it's your own car if it was your wife your girlfriend your partner whoever is to make sure that that petrol's in there if your petrol gauge is working that's all good because that uh that should mean your air conditioner's got a better chance of working too. Okay, and all another important factor is your your tire pressure and your oil pressure. The tires are the most important, guys. Okay, make sure your tires are good and that, and they've got enough tread on them. Here's my offline. Yeah, tire pressure, Barry, that's one a lot of people do forget is to go and check the, the tire pressure. Only takes a, a you know a few minutes really to do all your four tires. Make sure most cars are around 32, 3, 33 psi, Barry. Um, it just makes it less wear and tear on your tires and better for fuel efficiency. So it's safer to drive, better for fuel. Uh, it's a win win. So also, if you take a four-wheel drive out on the track, okay, you've got to make sure that you know what what condition the, the track is in because it's, if it has been washed away by heavy rains or close to bushfires and you try to get in there, no, that is a disaster waiting to happen. Here's Matt now. Yeah, you want to make sure you've got all the, the right tyre pressure there too, Barry, because usually when you're going off-road, you want to lower your tyre pressure to give you a bit more grip, and you want to make sure you have the right recovery tools. For example, uh, the, a winch, you need a good winch, and even the skid, skid bars underneath, Barry, so you can put those underneath your wheels if you're caught in a bit of sand or get bogged. Preferably, go for driving with another another vehicle. Please don't do this in just one vehicle because you can get stuck in the middle of nowhere, Barry. Fallen trees, like you said, with washing away or, or bushfires. Yeah, it's, it, can, it can make it quite hazardous. And make sure you know the depths of the, the water in the rivers and creeks in my offside. Yes, that's it. That's a good one, Barry. That's usually a rookie mistake. The rookies love to just get in their, their four-wheel drives. Oh, I can see that. It's not that far. But they haven't got out and tested with a stick or a gauge to see how deep that water is. So those extra few minutes, get out there, walk across the water with your stick, keep checking to see if there's any massive drops or any potholes. It makes it a lot easier for your four-wheel drive to go through. Otherwise, you can get washed away quite easily, Barry. Because if you if you get stuck and you're on your own, no, that's not how you should plan a trip in the bush. Okay? And also make sure you've got two way radio contacts at all times. Here's Matt now. Very true, very true. The old two-way radio, even better if you've got a satellite phone. If you know you're going off-road for a few days or a few weeks, make sure you're prepared. Enough fuel, enough water, your uh, first aid kits, and uh, preferably a satellite phone along with your two-way radio. So be prepared for all situations, even spare tyres, everything. You know, if you're a proper four-wheel driver, you'll know that you've got to have the proper preparation out there, Barry, to prevent a piss poor performance. And uh, uh, um, also, make sure you've got enough 
I'm very being started you you coil, your spar plugs, your radiator hoses, okay, you your jump pulleys to start the car if you've got a flat battery, okay, and things like that. And may and make sure that you got a spare coil because if you do the one coil that is it. You've had it. Here's Matt now. Yeah, there's no uh, NRMA up out in the bush. You can wait out there for a long time. So yeah, guys, just just plan, plan ahead. Uh, let people know where your destination's going. So if they haven't heard from you, at least you know you can be safe to know that someone will eventually come to you. Okay. Another important factor. Okay, before you even go on the trip with your mates, have a discussion on what's going to work and what is not going to work. Here's my offline. That's it, Dad. That's a good plan as always. Plan, plan your, your road trip, plan your bush tracks, plan where you're going from your A to B and uh, try and, you know, we're humans, Barry, we make mistakes, but at least plan ahead and uh, you've got a better chance of survival. And that's really what it comes down to, Barry. You want to be able to survive if you go and bush. Because Australia has some harsh terrain, harsh weather, some harsh animals as well, Barry, that can uh, sneak up on you and get you out there and you're going to be in serious, serious problems uh, for help to get to you in time. And make sure you've got the torch with some spare batteries and a radio with a spare a couple of spare batteries too. Here's Matt now. I think yeah, I think with all those things we've mentioned, Barry, I think that's a that's a good plan. I, I'd like to think if most people took a little bit of our advice, I think they would be quite easily be able to survive Barry out there in the bush, which is good to know. Um, it's coming into summer as we're talking about and a lot of people do try and hit those trails you now the weather's getting better and nicer and uh, I can't blame them Barry it's nice to get out there into nature. Now another thing you've got to be mindful of is bushfires. Now with the bushfire season not too far off okay before you even plan the trip Ring the rural, the rural fire service or the CFA in Victoria, okay, because if you're traveling in Victoria, ring the country fire authority and the RFS here in New South Wales and check with them whether you the tracks I'm going to be open, but if not, you will have to make alternate, uh, alternative arrangements. Here's my offline. Yeah, that's why planning is so important, Barry. Make sure you put your plans and planned actions into place because this literally can save your life. And if you've got family members and friends, you want to be able to protect them as well. So proper preparation there, Barry. Like you said. And also make sure you've got a good first day kit in case anybody gets hurt. Like your bandages, band aids, uh, uh, ice blanket, get them warm. Uh, a blanket, okay, band aids, cough medicine. Sun cream, insect repellent, you name it, it's all there. Here's, my, here's Matt now. Yeah, the old first aid box, Barry, that's an important tool. I wouldn't be leaving home if I was going bush without it, Barry. That's a must have, always stays in the four wheel drive um, because you never know when you're going to need it. We truly hope that our viewers out there don't need to use it. Uh, and 
If you're pitching and tent in the bush, make sure you get permission from from the national parks. Don't just rock up there. Here's my offline. Yeah, make sure you're allowed to go into these certain areas if you go in the bush. Also check if there's any fire dangers on the with the uh, rural fire fire service because a lot of these places that you'll be going to don't allow fires. And uh, I know very unfortunately a lot of people do just start them because they, they know no one's around. But um, you know, please take that seriously because it could affect your life and many others and also the wildlife, Barry. Our furry friends out there, we we want to protect them as well because unfortunately they can't get away as quick as us humans. Because like bush fires are not fun, guys. So enjoy your trip, but don't do anything stupid in my offline. Well said, Barry. That's. That's what we want. We want to have fun. That's why we do these things. But please, please, please plan your, your vacation. Please plan, plan your tracks. And uh, yeah, have an awesome time. So, this is what we are starting our spring series on. Looking after your vehicle. Before we get on, go to the break. Always make sure you've got someone else to drive the car with you. Because if you drive on your own and you're tired, you could easily run off the road and flip over. Here's Matt now. Yeah, that's why they're the old campaign. I think they still do it now. Barry, around holiday time, is stop, revive, survive. So they, they advise drivers to pull over every two hours. I know that's quite hard for a lot of people if they're doing a 12 hour stint, but if you're feeling tired, please pull over for your safety of yourself and your loved ones that are in your car, but also if you have respect for the other drivers on the road, because if your, your negligence could uh, cause a, a fatality. And uh, yeah, with Christmas and uh, holiday season varies, it's time to be with loved ones, not. Not, not to be in the hospital or even worse, so think, think before you drive. And don't drink and drive. So before we go to the break, before you go on the family camping trip, discuss with the family what is going to work and what's not going to work, okay? have a thorough discussion on what's going, going to happen. Here's my offline. Yeah, that everyone has different needs and different wants of when they go on a holiday, Barry. I'd like to think that most people before they go, they've got a pretty good idea of where they're <laughs> going to go. They've already booked a camping spot or a, or a holiday. Uh, yeah. So, and your family's off to make sure that 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 excuse me make sure that your family is well enough okay before you go on the trip because if, if um, someone in the in the family becomes ill before the trip even starts Okay, then there's going to be trouble. Here's Matt now. Yeah, the, the health is important. Very, you know, most people I would think if someone's sick, they'll, they'll call the holiday off and, and let them recover. That would be the smart thing to do. I like to think most of our viewers would do that because they care about their loved ones. But if you go away, yeah, make sure you know that you've got a doctor close by or there's a hospital in case you have to get there quickly. That would be. Uh, Smart thing to do. So, so make sure you know where the nearest hospital is if you go somewhere else in the state. Example, 
the Royal Brisbane Hospital is my offside. Yeah, that's a, everyone has a smartphone with them these days, Barry, so just Google it, find out where the closest hospital. If you're not close to a hospital, medical centre, you know, at least do your homework, do your research, because it could save you some, uh, some of your, your loved ones a really bad and unpleasant experience. So please, please just Google, have a look before you go. Plan. So don't just go willy-nilly and plan out everything and then realize, oh, beep, something's not right because you've got to be responsible. And that's what we've opened our show with today. Well, as usual, we've got the 11 o'clock conference coming up as well so so um do stay around for that and gladys and her team as usual doing a fine job so if you're watching out there keep up the good work and here's matt now to take us out to the break with that yeah guys uh Looking forward to seeing if these numbers drop today, Barry. I'd like to think that everyone's getting those vaccinations done, in which I, I hear for every about 60 plus percent, I think now has got the first vaccination. So that's great news because those people would go through with the second. So yeah, keep getting jabbed, guys. If you don't know anyone that's not getting, hasn't had a jab yet, please encourage them. So we'd like to one. So enjoy your holiday, but remember, make sure you've got enough food and perishables. And one last thing, cancel your milk and newspaper orders too, because you don't want to find off rotten food on your doorstep or off milk because, yeah will make you sick and and now that's the end of part one of our our spring series the, the conference is coming up next stay with us for part two of our spring series the first day and coming up after the break we're going to be talking about what, what, what will work and what won't work on a family trip. So that is all coming up on the Daily Rap, episode 267. The time is coming up to half past 10. Barry there and Matt with you. Stay with us. More, more of the show after the conference. Stay with us, guys. Good morning and welcome to part two of our show now. One 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 six cases today in NSW and all other in Sydney's West. Southwest, but we are not worried about that at the present time. Today on the show, we've been talking about cars and motorbikes and preparing them for for the spring getaway when the lockdown is over. Now, we've, we're going to be talking about what will work. Firstly, when planning a trip and how to organise it. And joining me now in the studio is Matt Brown. Good morning, Barry. Thanks again for our part two. Yes, planning holidays, which uh, is what we're all all looking forward to after this lockdown, Barry. So it's an important thing to be prepared for all kinds of situations. Okay, what will work? Okay, 
make sure you can have a family meeting before you go on the trip. Bring up a couple of hotels, and if you've got a disabled son or daughter in a wheelchair, make sure you ask them if they've got wheelchair access and lifts, uh, hotel rooms, accessible bathrooms. Here's Matt now to open the second part of episode 267 with that. Yes, that's an important point there is to have the proper preparation when going on a holiday, you know, to, to accommodate all kinds of things. And if you have elderly, disabled people, if we've got children with you, make sure you've got all your bases covered with all your accommodation, just to make it a nice, comfortable, and easy, relaxing holiday, Barry. Okay, make sure that you have maps of where you are going to go and how far you are going to go. Pick up a couple of tra travel brochures from your travel agent. It's my outside. That's it, the maps, the people who don't have those maps on them, everyone's got a phone, Barry, so we can check with your good old Google Maps. You know, planning where your trip's going, how far away the hospital is, or if there's a doctor around. We'd like to have those things planned too, in case, and we hope that no one has to use them, the emergency services in that on that holiday break. Okay. Because, and another point we'd like to bring up is making sure that there is a supermarket if you are traveling out of the state and staying overnight somewhere. Here's my oxide. That's true. You yeah, make sure you're planning for everything. You plan for your, for your accommodation, but your food and drink is also important. A lot of families' holidays are usually nowhere near the large supermarkets or towns because we like to get away and spend time a little bit more remotely so yeah have an esky with you for your to keep your food and drinks cold make sure you've got enough fruit and veggies in there for, for you and the family and snacks for the kids so yeah the proper planning can make it a lot easier on these long trips for the whole family okay and another golden another golden rule travelers okay make sure that you and your family get a good night's sleep before you uh, get away. Because if you've got to get on the road, say at 6 a.m. in the morning, make sure your family is in bed at a reasonable time. Keep my eyes on. Yeah, important, very important point is sleep, Barry. Going for a long trip. You want to make sure you're ready and recharged because in the car you've got your loved ones with you. You want to make sure that you're focused and you're not going to nod off to sleep. So that's an important point. And for those coffee lovers out there, get a takeaway coffee or make it yourself and have it in the car and to enjoy on your lovely holiday trip because you're heading to somewhere nice. It's going to be enjoyable. You should be nice and happy and ready to go. And another thing, check the weather conditions. Here's my oxide. Yeah, Barry, I'm not a big fan of driving in the rain. I don't think many of our viewers would be either. So check the traffic conditions, check the weather conditions. It'll make it a nice, easier, smooth journey. So we've covered about what will work, but just before we get on to what won't work okay have a family meeting and discuss where you're gonna go how far you are gonna travel with the car and like matt said you've got to have a good service car make sure you've got everything working in there such as your lights your air conditioning 
because it could be hot wherever you're going. Um, yeah, you yeah, automatic windows, okay, and locks and central locking. Here's my offside. That's true, baby. We need that car all ready to go, so you're ready to go. So there are all the, uh, the positive points with, that we should be looking forward to on our holiday, Mary. So, before you take the car on the road, get book your car in, okay, with your, with a mechanic that you can trust and get everything, your red zone, your pink slip, etc. In my offside. That's right, and make sure it's insured. It's an important one because going on holidays, there's a lot more cars on the road, there's a lot more chances of things that can go wrong. So make sure everything's paid up, all ready to go, and you can have a trouble free holiday. Or a stress free holiday. That's it, that's better. And, and also, what will work is writing out a list of what you need to take. And as Matt said just a minute ago, okay, check the weather conditions because if it's hot, okay, take your shorts, t shirts, tank tops, your tees. Your polo shirt, going out shirt, perhaps a pair of jeans if you go out to dinner at a restaurant, and your sun cream, your, your bongs, your sandals, your intake, insect repellent, your first aid kit, etc. Here's my oxide. That's it. We're going outdoors in Australia. We've got to be prepared for a lot of conditions. Even your umbrella for uh, some sun, which some uh, people like, or even your hat. So I'm a big advocate on wearing a hat outside with my sunscreen. And uh, try and stay in the shade too. Try and keep out of the sun from 11 till 3 because that's the hottest time of the day, if you can. Um, if you're on the beach, get a um, beach umbrella or a beach tent. They're light, easy to carry, and can save you getting burnt. And also, uh, okay, if you're going to a state where daylight saving is present, because daylight saving starts very soon. So if you're not, if you're in Queensland, don't worry about that because. You don't need to change your clock, but if you if you in South Australia or Victoria or Hobart or Tassie or or the ATT, yes, and you travel from Queensland, you will need to to change your clock from your Eastern Standard Time to Daylight Saving Time. In my offline. True, that's that's what the you know, proper preparation before you go away. Check it in case because a lot of people go close to those borders on holidays and if you're going back and across the borders, you'll need to make sure that you adjust your time accordingly because shops can close and we want to make sure that everyone gets serviced and everyone has a stress free holiday. Uh, and make sure that you Check on what where daylight saving is taking place before you leave. In my offside. Yes, with the technology these days, and lucky enough that our phones automatically change for us, but the house clocks and things like that will need to be adjusted. So do that accordingly. Now let's talk talk about before we get on to the don't compromise compromise on a group where you are going to go and how much it's going to cost you is my offline yeah there's you know usually when we go away we, you've got to 
got to talk to your loved one and your family and do the best for what you think with your budget and to try and cater for as many needs as you can because the holiday is for everyone, not just yourself. So it's good if we talk about this and have this already planned before you go because it makes your holiday a lot easier and a lot smoother. So make sure you set aside some money to pay for your petrol accommodation, making sure that you ha have accommodation booked for when you go up north on the way there and on the way back and you can even book online these days find out where you can stay on the way to your destination and like I've said if you've got someone in a wheelchair okay example like myself make sure that you you pack a, a a hoist to lift the person up, okay? Make sure it will fit in your van. Here's my outsider. Yeah, that's that's right. Make sure you pack everything that you, you need. Always do a checklist. Run through your checklist. And pretty much you should be all right. And what about your medication? And parking than that. Here's my outsider. That's an important thing there too, Barry, yes, the medication. Make sure all your meds are in, they're up to date, you've got your prescriptions in case they run out while you're there, and there's a pharmacy uh, close by or on the way to your destination. And make sure that you book somewhere on the way to your destination because if you travel in somewhere, somewhere like Brisbane, Make sure you stop somewhere on the way to Brisbane, example, like Port Macquarie or, or Cops Harbour or Lighthouse Beach. Make sure you ask if the, the place wheelchair accessible and bathroom friendly. Keep my offside. Yes, sir, that's. You're going away, make sure everything's you run ahead and ask those questions because everyone's needs are different and uh, you'll be able to find plenty of helpful uh, hotel staff around or at least someone who can guide you in the right direction because most country towns have an information centre. Uh, take use of that because those volunteers that work there do a great job. And, ma and make sure that then you ask, is there disabled parking outside that your hotel or motel? Here's my offside. In most of these places, thank goodness these days, have disabled parking, so that's an important point for your clients or, or loved one or family member to be able to get easy access to where you need to go and make sure that you've got a mobile phone that will pick up coverage in case you need to ring in case something does go wrong like a flat battery in the vehicle like it's one three double one 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 okay if you're in Queensland you can still ring that number and they will connect you to the RACQ if you're in Brisbane if you're in Victoria the RACV but I don't know what the others are around Australia now let's talk about what won't work Now we've talked about what will work on the trip. Now let's talk about what won't work. Having a broken down vehicle. Okay. Okay. Because you need to consider 
your vehicle. How are you going to get it fixed? Here's my offside. Also, what might work is having a bad attitude. You want to go away without a bad attitude, that's for sure. Yeah, because having a bad attitude, guys, it just won't work. And another thing I forgot to mention is if you're flying that thing, make sure that you book a, a plane, a, the flights well in advance and work out with the airlines what the cheap deals are. Here's Matt now. Yeah, it's a good time to book her while you can, while you're early before the prices go up as they get closer to Christmas, coming into peak time. So plan ahead, guys. Now, what won't work? Don't just turn up at the airport and book a flight. That's not how it works. And don't just turn up at a hotel in my offside. And what, what definitely won't work is no planning. If you haven't planned your holiday properly, don't expect to have a good holiday. Simple as that. And it's no good just getting in the car expecting things to go well because of one. Because what if one of the kids suddenly are sick, sick before you even go? Can you get a refund? I'm not sure, good man. Yeah, most places, unfortunately, with school holidays, they don't accept uh, cancellations. I think up to seven seven weeks is the the absolute minimum. I think summer even could be two weeks and higher, Barry. So it's important to have your proper proper planning ahead because you won't be able to just ring up and book in the night before on your holiday. That's for sure. And another thing that won't work is arguing about the situation. Here's Matt now. I, I, I've never heard of an argument that actually achieves anything. So proper, proper preparation with your planning and communication and treat your loved one or your kids or anyone that you're speaking to with respect because we know on holidays some things do go wrong but it's how you handle the situation. So, don't just turn up without a map and not knowing where you're going to go. Here's my offline. Use your Google, good old Google Maps. Do all your preparation before you go. You've got all the computer right at your fingertips. This COVID time is a good time to plan everything to make it a nice, easy, smooth transition to your holiday. And what won't work is the kids whinging and whining in my offside. Yeah, but it's not an enjoyable experience having the kids in the back yelling and screaming. So, you know, plan ahead, try and keep things nice and simple for them. And try and keep them engaged because uh, most of the driving is a, is a long time. Break up your, your driving and this can help. Have, uh, have so, that. Sorry, Barry. So what works is going, yeah, and then going bang, because that's how fatal accidents happen in my offline. Yeah, we, we all get frustrated sometimes, the kids, but yes, we've got to concentrate and, and uh, play around through it, Barry, and just, you know, with, with time. Your kids are well behaved, you've, taught, you've brought them up well, it's a lot easier. But, uh, kids are kids and they like to, to test us. So what won't work is not knowing where the nearest hospital is, or doctor, or, or medical centre. Here's my offside. That's, that's why it's always good to have your checklist, run through your checklist with everything through from your medical, through the supermarkets, through to all the things that you're going to need and every day that you could possibly think of. Because this way it can help you have a nice, easy transition and not have any arguments, fights, 
all the negative stuff that Barry and I definitely don't like talking about because we like to keep ourselves happy. And not can find the trip a week be the month before unless COVID has hit the state of course, depending on where you are. So so have a great trip guys. Compromise and work as a team and everything will be sweet. It's mad now. <laughs> That's a perfect way to say, Barry. Everything will be sweet. Work as a team. Uh, and not having enough money, okay, and thinking, oh my gosh, I've got no ma not enough money for groceries. Well, there are ATMs in the servos. Okay, the supermarkets and not having enough food for breakfast, your lunch or dinner and also not asking anyone if they could look after your pets because you can't just drop them off and not cancelling your milk or grocery order. Here's Matt now. Yes, that's an important point, Barry. The old uh, cancellation of those subscriptions, if you have them with your milk or paper, like you said, and your loved ones, your, your furry pets, look after them because uh, they're part of the family too and it's nice for them to have a, a break. So we've just about covered everything here. And another thing, uh, I forgot to mention if you are staying at somewhere else, get the, po the post office to redirect your letters to wherever you may be and tell them the address of and town that you are staying in and the postcode in my offside. Yes, for those long trips that you know you're going away for a long amount of time, the post office can help sort it out only for a few dollars a month and you can redirect those those posts. But let's hope that most people are only just going for a few weeks. Maybe get your neighbours or family friends to come around and help clear out your letterbox. So, uh, so the baddies, the robbers know that you're, uh, you could be home and not on holiday. So make sure also you leave a message on your answering machine. For example, if I want to say, Hi, this is Barry Fair. Unfortunately, I am away on a holiday at the moment. Uh, you can contact the house for any urgent inquiries and I will and I will return your call as soon as I will upon my return. Here's Matt now. Yeah that's a that's a good one Barry. I don't have much to add to that one. That's a well, that's a good point. And now here is the closing sequence. Before we close the show, we'd like to talk about having good barbecues, good food, and good fun. Here's my option. That's a good one, Barry. That's it. Having barbecues, having good food and good fun. Well, that, that's the sound and smell of summer for me. It's always nice to spend quality time with people. And definitely now after this uh, COVID uh, Rubbish is gone. We're looking at, you know, hopefully October, Barry, for those va double vaccinated that we can get outside, have barbecues, have friends over. I'm excited, Barry. And I hopefully I can travel one way. And, and which brings me on. Um, I will be here to bring you the first month of spring 
video and hopefully the next time we meet I may have some good news. So on that note, thank you for your company today on the show. And again, Matt now with his closing message now. Yeah, thanks to our viewers today. Had a great, great few topics for the first day of Spring Valley. So definitely excited. Sun's out. Weather's getting warmer. Great company. And uh, look forward to speaking with you again in the studio this coming Friday. Um, and next week on the show, We'll be talking about daylight saving and fish and chips, you name it. We've, we've got it all coming up to you next week here on the show, next Wednesday. And on Friday, we'll be here again for the end of the working week again, week uh, 11. Okay, so join Matt and I then. We, we've had a lot of fun bringing this show to you today. And here he is to say farewell. Thanks again, Barry. Looking forward to an action-packed Friday and, uh, and all these topics that we've got now. Spring's here. Looking forward to it, mate. And the number that we rely on 24 hours a day, you know what it is, the three donuts. Knock, knock, knock. Please do not ring that number unless you have an emergency. But here's Matt now to close the show with that. Keep the triple zero number, keep that for an emergency, guys. There's other people out there that need it more than you. So only ring that when you exactly have to use it. So thanks to all the AAA operators too. They do a, a great job. And, and Lifeline 13114, 24-hour service. Okay. So thanks for your company today. And we will see you next time round on the Daily Rats. But for now, it's 12 noon. Have a great afternoon and an evening, and we will see you on Friday for another edition of the Daily Ratch. But until then, I am Barry Fair with Matt Brown in the studio. You've been watching episode 267. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, we've had an exciting day today. I'm bringing the show about organizing a trip. And to finish off today, I've been speaking to Queensland. And the good news is that I've still got, I've got a, a spot there to, to, and to tell us more about that. Here's Matt Brown. Uh, thanks, Barry. Yeah, it was good. We spoke to your contact up there in Ray Park, Mitch, and he's looking forward to having Barry up there. So all Barry needs to do is hold on tight because they're excited to have him. And uh, from memory, Barry, from the phone call, your other housemate, he only moves in this coming week, does he? So it's a brand new build. So, um, it is now all getting close to the end of an era here for me at Oceana, but don't get the tissues out yet. <laughs> Save um, your tears for a rainy day. Here's Matt now. <laughs> That's the right attitude to have. Great attitude, Barry. If more people had that kind of attitude in life, we'd live in a lot more peaceful, happier times. But yes, off to Queensland. So that'll be hopefully, you know, by October, Barry, which is not that far away, mate, considering 
all this you had to contend with the last year and a half. So well done to you, mate. So we'd like to, but we still got a month of fun and games here on the Daily Rats. And on Friday on the show, we'll be going over the camping stuff again. So do join us for that. Here's Matt now. Yeah, looking forward to that, mate, for the fire and Matt talking about all those all those things, camping. Love to get out in the outdoors, Barry, so it would be great having a chat and see, uh, reliving a few camping stories. So, before we do go today, just recapping on what we spoke about, servicing your car, organising the trip, properly what to do, and what not to do, so so please do enjoy this video that we're about to put together. So until then everybody, episode 268 is um, coming up this Friday and it's uh, going to be another beautiful day before the shells roll in. So, on behalf of myself and Matt Brown now, it's farewell and have a great afternoon and we'll see you on Friday. The number that we rely on, 24 hours a day, that is zero, zero please. Do not ring that number unless you've got an emergency. And lifeline there too. Uh, one three double one one four. And here is Matt now to close the show with those numbers. Yeah, thanks, Barry. So, yes, if, if you're struggling through this COVID time, please uh, ring uh, Lifeline, as Barry's pointed out. And the triple zero number, call that in an emergency only, please. And let the operators uh, do their job because it's a, a tough job but a very, very important one. And just recapping the case numbers triple one six today. Okay, so just recapping that from the news conference. Okay, so. We will leave you now. Uh, thanks very much for your company today. And we will see you again on Friday here in the studio for the end of the week. Here's Matt now for his farewell. Thanks, Barry, for another cracking day. First day of spring. Looking forward to the Friday wrap up for the week. So, cheers. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Cheers, thanks for watching. Thanks for your company today, and we'll catch you next time round on the Daily Wraps. See you on Friday, everyone. Bye-bye.